Hi and welcome to this new immigration update video. Apologies because it's been a while since I last did an update video. There's been a few videos I'd like to do so I'm hopefully going to record some in the coming weeks. Something on MM and the minimum income requirement. Something on Agiarco and insurmountable obstacles. I'd also like to do something on the, the little weight provisions from 117B and have a look at some recent case law such as core rupia and they're relying on jeunesse as well so that's something to come in the future but today i just thought i'd do a quick video on seven year children 117b6 and the case of ma pakistan from last july let me give you the reference it's ma pakistan and others 2016 ewca civ 705 and it's the 7th of july 2016 i'll put the link in the notes below now you know set the rules for seven year children are set out in 276 ade 1 roman 4 and there's also a similar provision in 117 b6 so that's in the article 8 statutory factors that must be considered let me read you 117 b6 it says this in the case of a person who's not liable to deportation so this provision doesn't apply in deportation cases. The public interest does not require the person's removal, note the absolute language, where A, the person has a genuine and subsisting parental relationship with a qualifying child. What's a qualifying child? Whether that's a British child or a child who's resided here for some seven years. And notice there are genuine and subsisting parental relationships. It doesn't have to be a blood relationship as long as there is a parental relationship. So this can apply to step parents. And B, it would not be reasonable to expect the child to leave the United Kingdom. So there's a reasonableness test set out in this provision. Now, first, what the Court of Appeal do is they look at the provision 117B6 and they find that it's a standalone provision. Effectively, if this rule is satisfied, Article 8 would be breached. So, paragraph 17, Lord Justice Elias says this, It does not simply identify factors which bear upon the public interest question. It resolves that question in the context of Article 8 applications. And he goes on at paragraph 20 to say, If effectively the, the subsection is met, the conclusion must be that Article 8 is infringed. So what about then the reasonableness test? Well, there was an argument about what applied in the reasonableness test, whether it was just considering in relation to the children, whether it would be reasonable for them to leave the United Kingdom, or whether you weigh in the immigration history of the parents in a reasonableness test. And Lord Justice Elias said, well, looking at the matter free from case law, what I would do is favour the arguments of the appellants that we just look at the position of the children. That's paragraph 36. But he found that he was bound by a recent Court of Appeal authority called MM Uganda. Look at paragraph 45. Now, MM is a bit different because it applied to a deportation case and they were looking at the unduly harsh provision in the deport rules and statutes. And they found that in the unduly harsh provision, you've got to weigh into account the criminality of the appellant because it's a, a deport rule. So they apply this across to 117B6 and 276AD and say, well, you've got to weigh into account uh, when assessing reasonableness, the immigration history of the parents. I think there's scope for the Supreme Court to look at this because I think there are distinct differences between the deport rules uh, and this provision, which is specifically directed at people who are not subject to deportation. But at the moment when assessing reasonableness, the court is going to look at the immigration history of the parents. But then what about the application of the reasonableness test? And paragraph 46 of this judgment is worth its weight in gold. While I'm here, you should also look at the judgment of the President, Mr Justice McCluskey, in the Upper Tribunal, in the case of P.D. Sri Lanka. So have a look at that case. Let's have a quick look at paragraph 46 as I finish this video. Even on the approach of the Secretary of State, the fact that a child has been here for seven years must be given significant weight when carrying out the proportionality exercise. Indeed, the Secretary of State published guidance in August 2015 in the form of Immigration Directorate Instructions entitled, in inverted commas, Family Life, brackets, as a partner or parent, close brackets, and Private Life, 10-year routes. That's, that IDI is worth downloading and citing in your applications.
in which it is expressly stated that once the seven years residence requirement is satisfied, there need be strong reasons for refusing leave. Paragraph 11.2.4. So you're going to want to extract that in your skeleton argument, in your grounds of appeal, and your representations. And, and it goes on to say, these instructions uh, were not enforced when the cases now subject to appeal were determined, but in my view, they merely confirm what is implicit in adopting a policy of this nature. After such a period of time, the child will have put down roots and developed social and cultural and educational links in the United Kingdom, such that it's likely to be highly disruptive if the child is required to leave. The UK. That may be less so when the children are very young because the focus of their lives will be on their families, but the disruption becomes more serious as they get older. That mirrors what was said in cases such as Azimi Moyed um, from the Upper Tribunal. I probably mangled the pronunciation, but that case looking at children having greater weight to their private life from age four and onwards. And here's a brilliant quote at the end. Moreover, in these cases, there must be a very strong expectation that the child's best interest will be to remain in the United Kingdom with his parents as part of a family unit. And that must rank as a primary consideration in the proportionality assessment. So once a child's been here for seven years, there's going to be an expectation, a strong expectation, the Court of Appeal says, just on a result of the residence alone, that the child and the parents remain here. Because there's been a, a, a lot of the last couple of years, a lot of the courts have been saying, well, if your parents are going back, you can just follow your parents and your best interest is to be with your parents. Well, there's a different approach in MA Pakistan. Just to finish, that's looking at sort of seven year children. What about British children? Well, in that same IDI from August 2015, if you look at pages 55 and 56, the Secretary of State concedes that she shouldn't be arguing that it would be reasonable for a British child to leave the United Kingdom. She should approach cases on the basis that it would be unreasonable to expect a child to leave the United Kingdom, a British child, and that a parent or primary carer should be given leave. That's similar to the concession that was made in the Sanade case. So if you've got a British child who you've got a subsisting parental relationship, you should succeed under 117B6. And then if you've got a seven-year child, you've got this strong expectation and you're going to want to get the evidence, including things like social work reports, school reports, to show the ties the children have built in the United Kingdom. I hope this video has been of help to you and have a look at MA Pakistan and the IDI and cite that in your representations. Thanks a lot.